public perception to, to tie it back with SSL and you know both being of involved in it where the the public perception outside of Jamaica because I know that well a part of our vision 2020 2030 was to a place to do business like and be us being on the gray list too I was wondering how does that affect us being on the gray list affect the economy. Like I, I want, I always wonder how, how does. Well, you guys have been binging my content, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Based yeah. on these questions, I can tell. Yeah. Like the, the the gray list, because I'm like scamming. Yeah, like scam everybody. No, mm-hmm. and not everybody scams, but you know everybody ha- or every country has their illegal or their criminal elements in there. But does it really affect the overall broader perception of doing business in a country being on like these great this gray list and who determines that we if we got on a list the gray list black list whatever list well let me ask the question back to you no no if you hear <laughs> if you're considering investing your money mm-hmm. right and you hear that this particular country is known for scamming and mm-hmm. is on a gray list would you put your money there Sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're a risk taker. We, we come back to the risk, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. If you're, if you're, you know, comfortable yeah. with the risk, you'll take the risk. Yeah. But, but if then you're is not, it just that is it just that we're on the gray list? And I mean, the, I was, I was wondering too, because I'm like, who determines that we go on the gray list? And isn't the your economy more than just people investing? Is like what you make and how you export, the export, the import, like. I, these are like social studies knowledge that I have about the economy, really, and you have more yeah. more knowledge. So than there's I this do, there's this organization called FATF. Yeah, it stands for Financial Action Task Force mm-hmm. (FATF). I believe they are affiliated with the European Union, and so they set the global standards for what is required of countries and companies. Uh, what type of reporting should be done? How often should you report? What are the things that you should be doing to combat? The big thing is AML CFT, anti money laundering, countering the financing of terrorism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what you should be doing to make sure that money laundering isn't happening in your country, or at least you're preventing it as much as you can, and what you should be doing to prevent terrorism financing. So, things like, um, let me see if I can think of some of the some of the things. So, anti money laundering. So, what they do- did at so after the whole lot of scamming thing, you know, yeah. started exploding, especially in Mobe, now it's not as easy for you to be able to walk into a Western money Union and they, get they money. Shut down a lot of Western They're going to ask you yeah. for your proof of income, um, source of income. You're going to ask you for ID. Not everywhere in the world you go to Western Union, you have to present all the things that they ask you for here in Jamaica, mm-hmm. even when you're opening a bank account. So th- why is it so difficult to open a bank account? Why do I want this holy p- documentation? Mm-hmm. It's AML CFT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Proof of income, source of funds is the big thing. They want to be sure that you are not gaining this money illegally. But why the focus? I, I, is it is it wrong for me to think that like targeting especially a small country like america like jamaica sorry who yes there are criminal elements here and i guess you know profit from crime or scamming but in america where <laughs> you have some um some bankman freed and elizabeth Holmes and all these people like it's still not difficult for them but why is the focus on these smaller countries especially why is it such a zeroing on that us? question is above my pay grade <laughs> mm. I so, was just going to bring into the point as well, say, especially with the news of Bank of America and yeah. the news surrounding them. So why is would the Bank of America be required to ensure that they do that too? And you know, especially after Well, you see Bank of America also got sanctioned. Yeah, fine. So the fraud was uncovered, they got fined, they have to pay back the money to their customers. Yeah. So perhaps that that would be a part of it. So mm-hmm. what do you do when this type of thing is exposed mm. what are the repercussions mm-hmm. so a lot of the reg- some some other regulations have to do with what laws do you have in place to deal with this type of thing okay so there's a whole list there's a whole checklist of things that jamaica needs to meet mm-hmm. and so they've give us given us a deadline i think it's by october they have to meet the rest yeah. of these regulations mm. in order to be to come off of the gray list or not be on the blacklist at least a lot yeah. of western union shut down you know like because of that because of the whole scamming issue so that the fact of it or Factful, that, that thing that you said. <laughs> um affects that too as well, where they're looking to um, the Western unions and shut down all these agencies and, you know, make it difficult for people to collect and open up, well, collect the money and agents who own or people who own these. FATF wouldn't shut down the agency. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it is that whoever owns the company locally just found it too onerous mm-hmm. to continue running that type of business. Okay. 
And then you also have to take into consideration these are businesses with high cash transactions. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of physical money there and it's becoming more and more dangerous to keep cash. Mm -hmm. You see all the the robbers of the beryllium trucks? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. (laughs) This may be an an oversimplification of of the the problem in and of itself. But do you think that the music plays a part in the perception? That the bag of scamming songs and uh, (laughs) chopper songs? They may take that into consideration when you know, placing us on this blacklist. Is the classic chicken or the egg question. Mm. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm. Does art imitate life or does life imitate art? Mm. So that's a question that's beyond me. That's for (laughs) the philosophers to debate. (laughs) I guess public perception (laughs) email. You think we're doing enough to be off that blacklist so far? From what? From your vantage point? I haven't studied it deeply, Mm. but from what I recall, there was a a list of 19 things that we need to do to come off of the list. And if they don't make it by the particular date but i have not like gone into each individual thing to see mm. what have we done what haven't we done so i can't i can't so is it, it that we're on the list and we need to do these things to be removed or is it that we're on the gray list on the gray list is, and, and, and then they gave us the still the black list they gave us till the end of the year mm. to meet these requirements or else we'd be placed on the black list mm. okay, okay, okay and being placed on the black list means that you face sanctions and it's going to be even more difficult to do international trade mm. as who wants to do trade with a country that's blacklisted right True. That's going to affect our ability to shop online. Mm-hmm. Already you have companies, I heard like Shein don't take Jamaican cards anymore. Yeah. Mm. Situations like that. Really? Them and them, the Parico. Really? <laughs> right? Really? Of all places, <laughs> Shein, right? <laughs> I just want to say like the hypocrisy of these places. Like, But you know, for example, PayPal. Yeah. If you've ever tried yes, to set uh, up a was PayPal just account. About that. Yes, it's very and difficult. As a vendor. Mm-hmm. PayPal, you can't get your money out of PayPal yeah, as a can. Jamaican. No. Yeah. No. That's, it's this, it comes under the same thing the aml mm. cft because they don't trust that the money is legitimately earned so they're not mm. gonna allow you to take out your money i bet sad sam bankman free don't have these issues well he, he does right now actually <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um i guess my 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 last question to you is though is like overall the like, jamaica you, you talk about like in 2018 we're at a top of the stock exchange i think that's what you said right and i mean when you hear all these things you're like how does this benefit me as a simple man like i don't i don't i don't get it like it you know it seemed like inflation everything's still expensive you can barely afford certain things and you know certain goals that you want to achieve like a young person find it hard but from your vantage point do you think that we are as a country as a whole like we're gaining traction i i know you i know you said that and the reports reflect that we have the lowest um unemployment rate but many people is like well i'm employed but it feel like it's low employment you mm, know it's like underemployed work or mm. underemployed but like from your vantage point really like do you think that we're really as a country on a whole like we're gaining track and we're moving forward and better to be a country where people want to work and do business i do think that improvements are being made but I understand why it may feel like you make one step forward, two step back. Mm. Cause things just get expensive. Check mm. out this whole school fee thing with prep school. Yeah. So the government wanted to do a good thing mm-hmm. by raising pay for teachers, which is great, yeah, right? But then the implication of that is that government teachers are pay- getting paid way more than prep school teachers. So now all the prep schools have to raise their rates because now they have to match prep school fees to, I'm sorry, teacher salaries Mm. to what the teachers in the public schools are making. Mm -hmm. And now there are people who are saying, oh, um, that's a rich people problem, right? But you got to think about the impact of that on the wider society. If you have, first of all, it's not only a rich people problem. It's not only rich people who send their kids to prep school. Mm -hmm. I I went to a prep school. I sent my daughter to prep school and I definitely, I still not wealthy in the traditional mm-hmm. sense but when i told you i had my daughter young yeah. at just 19 mm-hmm. so i was doing you know making not a lot of money and i sacrificed mm-hmm. to send my child to prep school as a matter of fact the first semester her dad promised me he would pay the school fee and then didn't come through and didn't pay the school fee so i had to find it wow. and they took her out of school and it was a whole big thing wow and so first of all, not every, not every child in prep school is a rich student. But secondly, yeah. uh, you went to prep school? No, personal testimonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Rich. So it's not only I a rich people problem. one morning on the bench. Well, secondly, yeah. so, so think about those parents who really were sacrificing mm-hmm. to send their cat, child to prep school. If all of them decide no, that they can't afford it no more because it's gone up by 50% mm. and I'm going to try put my child in public school. Does public school even have enough space mm-hmm. for all those kids? 
kids. You now the public school going to be overcrowded and they're already they overcrowded. So there are wider implications for mm-hmm. something like that. So mm-hmm. like I said, start from the government trying to do a good thing, but then now we have all these ripple implications yeah. and it feel like the one step forward, two step back. Because yeah. now my school fee gone up and then cost of living gone up, rent gone up, food gone up, rice. Gone up, gone up, flower. Everything. Stepping up, stepping up. <laughs> Everything I raise. When I raise the price, I don't boom, boom, too. This is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seeing it wrong? Why not call it to me? But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the song says. Look it up. Yeah, I'm going to have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so people have to find other ways to make money, right? Mm. It's not the same as when our parents were our age. Because I always feel like, gosh, my parents were so far farther along in life right than i was at the my same mom age. owned a house my parents were homeowners they seemed they were middle class they're doing well and i'm here struggling you know yeah. um one of the reasons for that is people get married a lot later in life my mom got married at 19 i got married at 35 wow. so you have all those extra years where you're not combining incomes and increasing your economic power that's one thing mm-hmm. um the cost of living gone up by X amount. Salaries have not gone up by the same amount. The cost of owning a home has increased dramatically compared mm-hmm. to back then. Yep. Uh, the, the ratio between your income to salary has gone up. So income has gone up by this much, but houses prices have gone oh, up by this much, well. right? So there are all these different factors that we blame ourselves for not being where we should be in life. And our parents said, oh, all we had to do was just save our money. Go to and school, get an education. The people, in, the people in that generation said, oh, just don't drink so much Starbucks and you can <laughs> save your money. And they don't realize that the problem is way, way, way bigger than that. Yep. There's way, way more than just not drinking Starbucks mm-hmm. anymore. The economy is completely different than it was yeah. 20, 30 years yeah. ago. So we need different strategies in order to succeed in today's economy. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to invest. We have to learn how to make our money work for us. We have to become owners of assets. The wealthy people have always known this. Mm -hmm. We in the proletariat just never know. Mm -hmm. So now we need to learn the secrets of the wealthy and apply them to our everyday lives so that, you know, we can. And it's not it's not even just survive. It's not really hard to, to invest. That's what I realize more and more. It's like it's not difficult. Like if you have enough money to buy, quote unquote, Starbucks, it's the same or equivalent to opening up. Yeah, most account. stocks on the Jamaica Stock Exchange cost less than 100 JMD. Yeah. The vast majority of them mm-hmm. cost less than 100 Jamaican dollars to buy one share. And you just buy. And if you buy one, that's that can help grow your yeah, exactly portfolio. start yeah. somewhere but you're so. saying that we're is we have the capable we're not like the worst the economy isn't the worst or you know it's a lot better than it used to be mm-hmm. i can tell you that for a fact i mean you look around and you see development it's the buildings being built you see you know construction and mm-hmm. you know you physically see changes from mm-hmm. when i came here in 2008 to now in 2023 the place physically looks different Mm -hmm. and looks better and there are people who are going to say oh Kalila JLP I did not even grow up here I mean (laughs) you are dressed in green (laughs) too this is a military green money 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 colors money Jenna I wear military green and and money green there you go I did not grow up here I have no political affiliation Mm -hmm. no party never done nothing for my parents my family no no party never sent me to school nothing like that Mm -hmm. so so no but um um, but I do believe there have been improvements because I can't even think where we were when coming out of the IMF agreement, where we were 2012, when the last IMF agreement mm. ended mm-hmm. compared to where we are now. Yeah. It's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, on the street every day, the inflation is the big problem. Yeah. The cost of living just going up. So we can see where we're coming from. The macroeconomic factors have improved. Yeah. But on the ground, have things improved? And I that's, think, that's where the discrepancy is. And I think yeah. that's it too. When you hear the prime minister talk about, yeah, unemployment has gone down. Yeah, da, 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 da. We're like, how many people really feel it or even like even care about that when, especially the butt the bottom line yeah is we're not feeling it or we don't see those benefits in our in our everyday life i know my personal life has improved mm-hmm. but i also know why it's improved because i learned how to invest yes. i became an owner i became an entrepreneur mm-hmm. i started investing in asset classes to mm-hmm. make my money grow so if you want your personal life to improve you gotta start doing these things mm-hmm. too because if you're just depending on savings alone you will never get there mm-hmm.